Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. So we are back with another M2 video, or is it? Because I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys in the comments and my DMs about which MacBook you should buy, the M2 Air or the MacBook Pro. Now, the answer to that, of course, depends on a couple of factors, but I do believe there is a clear answer. Let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what's up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So the M2 Air has been out for a couple of weeks now, and we've done a bunch of videos on it, trying to answer specific questions like, is the base model M2 Air good enough? And if you have to choose, is it better to upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM or 512 gigabytes of storage? If you haven't seen those videos and you're interested, I'll link to those videos at the end of this one. In this video, we'll answer a third very frequently asked question, and that is, should I get the M2 MacBook Air or is the MacBook Pro the better option for me? Now, like I said in the intro, the answer to that question will depend on a few things, but I do think that if you're still unsure, that by the end of this video, you should be able to answer that question for yourself. So let's have a look at both models, compare the design, the performance, the price, the user experience, very important. And then I'll tell you at what point I believe it no longer makes sense to go for the M2 MacBook Air and you're better off going for the MacBook Pro in most cases. Now, before we get started, let me just clarify that when I say Pro, I mean the M1 MacBook Pro, not the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro, to be honest, I'm not even sure why that machine exists unless you really, really like that touch bar. The 512 gigabyte storage model is the same price as the 512 gigabyte M2 Air model, but the Air is much thinner, has a larger display, thinner bezels, battery is about the same, and in most situations, it's just as fast. So I do not consider the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro a true Pro model. In this comparison, we're looking at the 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro. Right, so starting off with the design, we've seen that Apple has moved away from the iconic wedge design more towards the boxy MacBook Pro-like design, while still keeping that ultra sleek and ultra portable quality to it, especially this gorgeous midnight color. I love the way it looks, and yes, it smudges very badly, but I have made my peace with having to clean it a lot. And I much prefer it over the somewhat stale silver or space gray that are still the only two options if you want the MacBook Pro. But aside from the similarities, there are some important design differences between the M2 Air and the 14-inch M1 Pro. First of all, and quite obviously, the Air is a lot thinner and lighter. It's only 0.44 inches as opposed to the 0.61 inches of the MacBook Pro, the Pro is also a little wider, and the Air is also quite a bit lighter as it comes in at only 2.7 pounds, which is 0.8 pounds less than the 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro, and that's not a small difference. Both laptops now have a full-sized keyboard, including a full function row, but you'll notice that the M1 has that black on black design, whereas the keyboard on the Air is black on midnight, in my case, or whatever color M2 you might choose, which also includes space gray, silver, and starlight. A more important difference between these two MacBooks is the number and type of ports. Both machines come with a MagSafe 3 port, which I think is a nice thing to have, especially when working in crowded spaces where people might trip over your cable. The last thing you want is for your laptop to be yanked off that table. But the similarities end there because the M2 MacBook Air has only two Thunderbolt ports, and unlike the MacBook Pro, which has Thunderbolt 4 ports, these are Thunderbolt 3. This comes with a difference in speed, but it also means you can hook up only one external display to the M2 MacBook Air. So if you're used to rocking two external displays, this is definitely something to be aware of. It doesn't stop there because the M1 MacBook Pro has an additional third Thunderbolt port, an HDMI port, and my beloved SD card slot, which if you're creative, you will appreciate. Now for the display, both have that Apple notch, which to be honest, you don't even see anymore after a couple of minutes of use. Both have those nice thin bezels, but the display on the M1 MacBook Pro is a little over half an inch bigger it's also quite a bit brighter, and it has mini LED, or as Apple calls it, Liquid Retina XDR. Whereas the M2 MacBook Air has only a Liquid Retina display. And I do say only somewhat jokingly, because let's be honest, they both look pretty excellent. But fair is fair, the XDR display is better, the blacks are blacker, it's more vibrant, and let's not forget that it has 120 hertz pro motion, which is quite nice, and once you're used to that, you will definitely notice the difference going back to a 60 hertz display. You know what also looks really great on a 120 hertz display? Your own website. 
That's right, and if you don't own a website yet, what's keeping you? If you're a creative or any kind of professional, it's really important to build your own brand, and the easiest way to be found online is to create your own website. No idea how to do that? Squarespace is the perfect tool for you. Trust me, I don't know the first thing about building websites, but when I put together my website using Squarespace about two years ago, it literally took me a couple of hours from start to finish. You just pick one of Squarespace's awesome templates, depending on your business, and from there, you can customize it and really make it your own. You can create member areas, you can set up an online store, do email campaigns, you name it. I may have lost a few pounds since I put together that website, so probably I should take some time this week to update some of the visuals, but I kid you not when I tell you that shooting the actual photos will take more time than it does to update the website. It's that easy. So guys, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, make sure you go to squarespace.com slash Patrick Rambles to save 10% off your first purchase of a website domain using the code Patrick Rambles. Right, back to the video. In terms of sound quality, the M1 Pro also takes the cake. Both have three microphones, but the M1 has what Apple calls studio quality mics, and they do sound noticeably better. The biggest difference though is in the speakers. The speakers on the Air have definitely been improved, and it now has a quad speaker system, and if you look closely, you can see the top firing speaker sitting right underneath the screen. However, the M1 MacBook Pro has a high fidelity six speaker sound system with force canceling woofers, which give it a rich and full sound. I did a little side-by-side -side comparison for you guys so you can hear for yourself. Hold up, things go wrong when I pull up. They all on me like I want some. Think I got what you need, but I have none. Hop off, you're a freak and I'm handsome. Slide up in the club like two chains. This snake is on top of the full chain. Sign out with a star, no new name. Right, so I think the M1 is a clear winner here. In terms of performance, the major upgrade in the M2 chip has to do with efficiency. It has four efficiency cores rather than two on the M1 MacBook Pro, but the SoC on the M1 goes up to 10 core CPU instead of eight, eight performance cores instead of four on the Air, up to 16 core GPU instead of 10, and at 200 gigabytes per second, it has double the memory bandwidth. To be clear, for the purpose of this comparison, we are talking about the M1 Pro chip. The M1 Max chip is in an entirely different league, but that does come with a matching price tag, which is far higher than a spec out M2 Air and an M1 Pro. Now, talking about price tags, in my opinion, this is what dictates to a large extent when it makes sense to choose the M2 MacBook Air or when it's wiser to go for the 14-inch MacBook Pro instead. Now, like I said in previous videos, a large demographic for the M2 MacBook Air will be students, and of course, for most students, budget will be a top priority when choosing a computer, and in that case, we're looking at the base model M2 MacBook Air, which by the way, is a fantastic device. I know I've spent the past minutes talking about how the M1 MacBook Pro is superior in almost every aspect, but that doesn't mean the M2 MacBook Air isn't a great computer. In fact, I spent an entire video talking about why the base model M2 MacBook Air will be a great choice for a lot of users. And those users that are looking at the base model M2 are not gonna be looking at the M1 MacBook Pro. The price difference is massive, and if you're the type of user that just wants a light device to do everyday tasks, you're probably not gonna be interested in the Pro. Where it becomes more complicated is when we start upgrading the M2 MacBook Air. Because as soon as we bump up the RAM on the M2 to 16 gigabytes and the storage to 512 gigabytes, we're looking at a $1,700 price tag, which is only $300 below the entry-level 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro, and that comes with all the improvements in display, I.O., and performance we just talked about over the M2 Air. If you upgrade the M2 any more than that, let's say you want the 24 gigabytes of RAM or the terabyte of storage, the price difference is pretty much gone. And at that point, I would strongly advise against choosing the M2 Air for most people. The performance you will get out of the M1 MacBook Pro at that price point is just far superior than the M2 MacBook Air. Specking out the M2 MacBook Air completely 
is just silly in my opinion because at that price, you can configure an M1 MacBook Pro with a 10-core CPU, 14-core GPU, and 32 gigs of RAM, plus all the other advantages that were just mentioned. So to sum up, if you're one of those people that is on the fence about whether to get an M2 MacBook Air or an M1 MacBook Pro, it is my humble opinion that if you plan to upgrade the M2 MacBook Air to 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage or beyond, you're probably better off looking at a Pro. Okay, with that said, there are two groups of users to whom all of this is completely irrelevant and they should stick with the Air. The first group is quite obvious. It's those who are looking at the base model M2 because of the lower price or because they simply don't need more in terms of processing power. The second type of user to whom none of this holds any relevance is the type of user to whom budget is no obstacle, but they have a strong preference for the slimmer, lighter form factor of the M2. Maybe you just love the way the M2 Air looks and feels and you have the budget to spend to get yourself the best possible configuration of that slimmer, lighter computer. If that's you, you probably aren't even interested in an M1 MacBook Pro and you don't care about all the fancy extras. And that's totally fine. I think you're the reason Apple even makes that higher spec MacBook Air. But if you care mostly about performance and you're just trying to get the best bang for your buck, don't go crazy upgrading an M2 MacBook Air, but just opt for the M1 MacBook Pro instead. Guys, I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.